Is it true that you guys are doing over 500, and I'm going to say this again, over 500 Medicare policies a year locally? Each. Yeah. Each. Yes, sir. So over a thousand a year locally. Between us. For our agency. Yeah. Dude, I good. love it. The title just got better. That's good, man. That's good. What, what What's the secret? How does someone say, okay, I want to partner up with somebody. I got a buddy, whatever. We want to do over a thousand a year. What's the secret? All right, welcome back. I got Kenny Layman's and Ethan Glidewell, the Medicare Millennials. Dude, what constitutes a millennial? <laughs> well, it's an age group and uh, people mistakenly think we only want to talk to millennials. That's not really it. We just are right smack dab in the middle of the millennial yeah. demographic. And we do have a passion for getting more people in that age group into Medicare and the senior market in general. So it's just that age group, you know, the late 20s to early 30s. Yes. There. Yes. Uh, how? How? Kenny, Ethan, how, how old are you guys? Twenty nine and holding. Yep, twenty nine. Yeah. Hold, hold as long as you can. I just hit thirty in July, so man. Yeah. I'm old, man. I'm I'm an old folk. I'm still. I guess I'm still a millennial though. So that's cool. You know. Yeah. yeah I hear it's all downhill after thirty. So. Yeah. No doubt. Um, our industry <laughs> needs content. You know, from from people that are young doing some big stuff. Uh, you guys obviously are the Medicare Millennials YouTube page and everything else. You guys are documenting your journey, which I love. You're sharing content with others to do some big stuff. Is it true that you guys are doing over 500, and I'm going to say this again, over 500 Medicare policies a year locally? Each. Yeah. Each. Yes, sir. So over a thousand a year locally. Between us. For our agency. Yep. And it's just. Dude, I love it. The title just got better. That's good, man. That's good. <laughs> What, what, what's the secret? How does someone say, okay, I want to partner up with somebody. I got a buddy, whatever. We want to do over a thousand a year. What's the secret? I'd have to say it's, it's, there's no, there's no secret bullet. There's no magic bullet, but the best way I could address that is you have to find one system that works and put your ears back, plug into it, believe in it and consistently spend the time and money needed to execute it. You know, Ethan and I have in the past, we've done many things in the senior market, maybe been swayed by, you got to try this, you got to do that. You need this new fancy CRM, you got to try this new lead. And, and sometimes those are great things to to dabble in and try. But ultimately what, what's helped us get our success is we found a system that works, we plugged into it and we began to perfect it over time. Hmm. So, yeah. I love that. And, and, and what, 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 what drew you and eventually leading to realizing that we need one system that works, that is a well-oiled machine that we can consistently do every single week? Because I think a lot of agents, 92% fell and they struggle to find what is my system. You know, wh what led you to the system that you have and, and what gave you that realization? Well, really just a small um, history on it. it. Like Kenny had just mentioned, we have done everything under the sun when it comes to Medicare and final expense or annuities, et cetera, et cetera. Really, I think uh, it was just one of our uh, one of our friends that's also in the business. He he kept really calling me over and over last year, sitting there saying, "Ethan, you got to be doing Medicare Advantage. You're missing the boat." And both Kenny and I were essentially brainwashed to think that Medicare Advantage was bad. Um, and he just really he called me probably every other day, "Ethan, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it." And finally, I didn't even tell Kenny a little secret there. I didn't even tell Kenny, but I took my AHA, I passed it. And started doing some contracting and then i was like by the way kenny i'm going to start doing medicare advantage and he was like whoa 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 what, you know what's going on here <laughs> and, and, and so we got him on board and then after we got him on board we did our first aep last year and then he found our current organization that we work with in the system and that really launched us into the stratosphere that's huge man to go from first aep to, to doing some massive stuff like you guys are um, is really remarkable. And, and it's cool that you're documenting it because there's a lot of people out there, a lot of, a lot of young people, old people, whatever, middle aged, et cetera, that, that are in your shoes that are looking for ways to put up this type of massive production. I mean, you guys are well on your way to earning seven figures pretty freaking quick, uh, which is, which is amazing. You know, what was that the goal? What was the target along the way or what is it now? Changes. We, it changes, but we actually it should too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's evolving, right? And now we know what's possible. The, those numbers are growing. But it was like two and a half years ago that we both said, hey, let's let's really strive to get our first 
500 Medicare supplements on the board. You know, mm. and at that time we were mainly focused on our final expense production as producers, but we knew long term that, that at that time we got Medicare supplements exclusively. That so that kind of was our first reference point, and then when we realized that honestly, if this if in this exact system you could do a thousand plus, we have a friend that runs a very similar system that did over a thousand last year. Um, for focused on Medicare, just like we are a very similar system. So that number is evolving. 500 was just, it sounded good, right? 500 yeah, yeah. over 10,000 a month in renewals, passive renewals. That's a great place to start. Yep. Um, help replace that final expense income that you're used to once you get there. So, Well, to be flat out honest, I mean, Kenny and I, uh, we, we both celebrated our first 50 last year. And I remember high five and going, dude, we're going to make it. Here it is. We got 50 people on the books and we were super excited, but we've always gone 500 and now we're looking 1,000, 1,500, why not? Wow. I love how transparent you guys are, man. You're like, dude, we're, we're figuring it out. We're not perfect. You know, I mean, I love that. A lot of people kind of try to fake it till they make it and you guys aren't faking nothing. You're just, you're just authentic, raw, real, rare, whatever ours I can come up with, you know, that's cool. God. I mean, it is what it, and we need, we need that type of transparency. And Cody, you bring a lot of people on your channel that provide that type of transparency and con transparency and content that yeah. a newer agent that really wants to make it just needs to hear this type of thing. You know, yes. in full disclaimer, before we found Medicare Advantage, we were pretty successful in final expense and had written, you know, annuities. And we had written a few hundred med subs over the course of time. We weren't doing it fast like we are now that we're focused on Medicare Advantage, but we're still brand new to Medicare Advantage. We're in our infancy. It's changed our business, and we love sharing that, the good, the bad, the ugly with people. Yeah, so. yeah. that's huge. Have, have you guys always thought, I mean, we're, 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 I mean, one of the things I talk about is it's on our wall, think big. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a dreamer, you know, visionary. I'm always thinking about, okay, right now my goals every day, I'm thinking, okay, what, what can I do? How can I make it bigger? Um, I, I can see your minds have shifted over the last two and a half years to where you're thinking a lot bigger now than you were. Um, how important is that for other people to think like that? How do they adopt that mentality? And how has it totally shifted everything you're doing? Well, yeah, I'll answer that in just a second. One thing Kenny's always been really good at, because uh, he's the one that brought me into the business, is I, I can remember three or four years ago, I was always thinking big, real, real big, always thinking, what is this going to turn into? And Kenny does the same thing, but he's very, very good at sitting there going, okay, in order to get to big, you got to do all these little small things. Yeah. Um, and so that, I kind of just wanted to throw that in there as far as, um, you know, this, our mind, our mindset has shifted and continues to shift, but at the end of the day, we still have to continue producing. We try and tell that to folks on our, on our channel. At the end of the day, we're still producers. We're still out there in the field three times a week. We're still out there writing business. Um, but of course the numbers have changed and our focus have changed. Now we're trying to, uh, I hate hearing people say, if I can do it, you can do it, but it, it's true. If, if we can do it, I mean, there's anybody can absolutely do it. So now our minds and our, our, our thoughts have shifted into really trying to help people out and show that you can do this, that it's not impossible. And to add to that, I think it's, it's really important for newer producers, or even if they're not a new producer, but they're getting into Medicare, so you got to have those big dreams and those big stretch goals. And, and I'm, I'm a big believer in that, but you cannot lose sight of the immediate short term goals. Too many people live in the clouds and then they, they don't realize that before you get to the clouds, you just got to get to the second, second story, you know, and, and let it to climb upwards. So um, our goals have gotten bigger over time. But then again, at the end of the day, our day to day, we're really realistic in what we can do. Right. We know here's what we can accomplish that will eventually get us to the bigger goal. And we spend more of our time focused on those small goals than that add up to the big dreams and the big Yes. Goals. Yes. So. Yes. What, what's something massive that the two of you want to eventually achieve or do together that you've talked about that nobody else knows? And the first time you're ever saying it is right now on, on my YouTube channel. It's funny you asked that question because all of yesterday I was sitting there just brainstorming. Um, with one of my mentor buddies that we were just, he was, he asked me the exact same question. Where do you see this? Where do you want it to go? Um, ultimately, I, the first time anybody's heard it, podcast. I would love to, to host a podcast. I think I even mentioned something about listening to a podcast this morning, Kenny, but that's where I want to go yeah. or where we're really going to. I think to add to that, I just, I really think that our YouTube channel is a great platform. I'd like to see several thousand people 
um, enjoying our content and getting something out of our content within the next year. And yeah. if we can couple that with another avenue, like a podcast, I'd love that. And it's really, it's not, those platforms to us are not so much about recruiting or anything like that as it is about um, just genuinely getting to know other agents and letting them feed off of us. And we feed off so many of the people that watch our YouTube channel, right? Like we get so much yeah. out of it, like I'm sure you do too, Cody. So I think to answer your question, we want to we want to influence a lot of people, yeah. particularly millennials, in this uh, in this industry, and, and help them get where they want to go. So just just to kind of yeah. add on to that a little bit, I wasn't able to make it to eight percent, but just when y'all looked in the crowd, who do you as far as age group, who do you guys see? Mostly yeah. older, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's sure. just a huge gap between that generation and then us, and so that's really what we're trying to do is is insurance is not sexy we understand that and you've got to grind and it's tough in the beginning years but we've got to we've got to get it's i feel like it's our passion it's our goal to get that message out to everybody that's our age a little bit older even a little bit younger look guys like look at the freedom that it can provide you guys don't do the nine to five don't you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's really trying what we're trying to get the message out to I love that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the big reasons we started the conference is the average age is 59 of an insurance agent, for those that know that, which is insane. And a lot of the insurance industry stuff for a millennial is is pretty boring. You know, it's like a lot of industries are farther ahead. You know, the music is like, you know, classical with no words. You know what I mean? We're, we're like playing a piano on stage and, you know, it's just freaking boring, man. And, and I'm like, we got we to gotta liven this up a little bit. You know, we like to have some fun. And it's okay to throw in some entertainment and, and some education at the same time. It helps keep our attention, you know? So that's a big reason why we're doing 8%. So I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Cause that's always been in the back of my mind and, and trying to, you know, it, it ain't sexy, but, but, you know, people doing what you guys are doing is helping move that mission to where it's, it's attracting a younger age group. And, and I don't want to see it die. I want to see it grow, you know? And I love that you guys are about that. Yeah, an 8% nation, by the way, Cody, was just so excellent. I had never been before. I was really upset that Ethan couldn't make it. I know he'll be there next year because how excited I was from what I got out of it. And we wouldn't you know, be here talking to you had I not been able to make a, a, a little relationship there. True. And so just one thing I wanted to say about the, uh, the m millennial age group is that that kind of event, the networking, they don't understand that you get those opportunities in insurance where you might not get those in a lot of different career so, you know, it's that's like a perk to the business, I would say, is to be able to go to 8% Nation or watch these YouTube videos and just get all, all this content of people that are hungry and excited and doing what you're trying to do. So it's a, yeah. a perk of the industry. Thank you, buddy. I'm glad you came. It was it was a blast. It was good to meet you. We're obviously forming a relationship and the good things are happening, which is huge. Um, what is that? How much have you guys learned from other people? Because there's a lot of in, insurance agents that are very closed off. You know, they, they have their manager, they have their local, you know, they have their parents, they have this and that, but they're very closed off to learning from others. And my business started to really shift when I started to realize, put my ego aside, I can learn a lot from everyone. And how much has your business changed by doing that? Or maybe it hasn't. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm probably the worst as far as trying to put my ego aside. That's always been too. difficult for me i think sales maybe comes naturally for me that's all i've ever done um but kind of back to your question i mean that's the reason we're able to do what we're doing now and that's the reason we're being launched as far as uh medicare sales is because kenny found some guys who were doing some things that i was like eh. when somebody tells you something like they're doing a thousand uh policies a year there's one of two ways you can react you can say that's bs or how the heck are they doing that and I'm almost kind of like that BS guy where he's like, uh, no, I got to sit here and listen to this guy. And it may be BS, but I'm going to hear him out. Sure. And so now I'm working on that every single day where I'm just like, okay, wow, there actually are people out there doing things that they're saying they're doing. Um, so I'm saying a, a large percentage, hopefully large percentage now, um, is, is being shifted for me at least. Being more open-minded. And that's by design. It's by design in this industry, unfortunately, that many recruiters that get people into the business don't want you to go too far outside of their realm of influence. And it's really unfortunate because in the long term, that doesn't help that new producer grow. And it doesn't help, honestly, whoever is the one kind of trying to keep them within a certain wheelhouse, it's ultimately gonna stunt their growth. 
And so Ethan and I started out in a captive environment and we were really not encouraged to branch too far out, very sheltered. Um, very sheltered. And every year since we left that captive environment, we've opened our minds more and more and it's helping us grow. I mean, we are becoming more successful directly as a result of networking and being open-minded. And, and I've loved seeing that growth, growth with Ethan because he's gone from skeptic about some things, rightfully so, to, hey, have you heard about this? Have you talked to that person? Can we meet this person? And it's just yep. it's a healthier mindset for an agent. So Yeah, what, what's, what, shifted that, uh, what shifted that for you, Ethan? Because I, I, I know that literally three years ago, I was exactly that. Uh, well, talking to the right people has shifted that. Like Kenny was saying, we were extremely sheltered and it was like, anytime we were, well, what about this? We would kind of, uh, challenge the status quo. They'd be like, eh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that information. Um, so really it's been talking to the right people. I'm having a fantastic business partner here. My wife challenges me every single day. Um, that's changed quite a bit for us because, um, uh, every single day she's like, what's next? What are you doing? What are you doing next? What are you doing now? Um, and then really just taking some personal accountability and trying to grow, um, which takes, you know, it can take a lot, especially does for me. So, yeah, me too. That's tough. It's, 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 you well, know, every yeah. single day, I've got to get a little bit better. I've got to learn something new. I've got to talk to somebody new. I've got to do something different other than just produce because I'm going to eventually get bored with that if that's the only route that I went. So I've got to continue improving in, in other areas. You, you guys, have a sports background, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, we both played sports, yeah, for yeah. sure. What, what sports did you play? I played football. And okay. he played uh, basketball, tennis, and baseball. And nice, then man. Back. Don't ask about that. Jeez. What, what, uh, uh, Ethan, what was your favorite sport? Ooh, uh, I'd say probably basketball followed by tennis. Okay. We're gonna have to all. Get, we're gonna have to all. I, I cannot take you in tennis, but we'll have to all get on the basketball court at some point. You know. Been many years. Been many years. <laughs> I won't be there. Okay. Yeah, you could be on the tennis court. I'm like, dude, I am playing a lot of pickleball. Though. I don't know if you played pickleball, but that's a blast, man. That's fun. I've heard about heard it, it, but yeah. I've never tried it. Is it similar to racquetball? Yeah, it's like a racquetball, ping pong, tennis mix, smaller court, fast paced. Um, it's more. It's popular at senior centers, but it's actually fun. It's good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, if we yeah. play basketball, we got to stay inside the paint because anything outside of that, I can't play. I can't, okay. I can't shoot. I can't do any of that. <laughs> you, 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 you'll take me then. I'm, I'm quick and can dribble, but uh, yeah, I'm not the best in the paint, so that's good. Um, p pivoting to what do you guys believe is if you each had to give one tip right now. See, there's, say there's a new agent out there listening. Say there's a struggling agent out there listening, and they're like, um, I'm close to failing. I need some guidance. I need some help. And there's a lot of people out there like that, which I hate. And that's why, that's why both of us do it. All of us do what we do. Um, if you each had to give one tip that shifted the business for you, that you had to share with someone else right now that had a good chance of helping them, no pressure, what would you say? I would say shed the fat. I mean, I knew the answer to that the moment the question came out of your mouth because I've been there so many times. If you're on the brink of failure, chances are you're focused on the wrong things, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what, what I would encourage that agent to do is think about what is the core product that I started to pursue to begin with? And every single day, what am I doing that directly leads to me becoming successful at selling that product? Anything else I'm doing on a daily basis that is not contributing to that, cut it out. You gotta make it really simple and, and just narrow down on what's going to help you do that and shed the extra things that you're doing, probably trying to be all things to all people and use too many products or too many lead sources. Just cut the fat and let get down to the basics and find somebody that will help you identify that and do that. Mm, that's good. Yeah, there's a lot of noise in the insurance industry, a lot of distractions. Everybody's an expert in everything. And, and and that's why I'm guilty as far as not being um, in a whole lot of Facebook groups and things like that because that stuff just drives me crazy because everybody's an expert at everything and I just uh it just I, I don't know I can't handle it I get frustrated so I'm gonna build on the last part of thing what he just said is find somebody I'm I'm big on finding a mentor find somebody that's doing whatever that product that you pick whatever that is Medicare final expense annuities whatever it may be find somebody 
that's doing it and doing it successfully and that will give you the farm such as what we do for medicare give you the farm and get you back on track and get you successful that, that's all that i can say that's good that's real good yeah that's something that's uh I, I can identify and appreciate and agree with both of those sentiments by the way um riches are in the niches right that's what i heard from kenny i love that you know most people struggle to focus especially like an entrepreneur high d you know like i struggle to focus big time i'm on after this i'll be freaking shift into something else for 14 seconds and then the, you know what I mean uh, so that's awesome I love that I even I when you were saying that Kenny I was thinking about myself I'm like okay what are some of the things that I'm doing that are not actually helping move the brain and the business that I need to stop doing like that's what I that's what I shifted to so thank you and then Ethan um, I am I found some mentors some people in my life that have definitely leveled me up they've got me around some bigger people they've got me thinking bigger um, I invest in a lot of masterminds and retreats and coaching and stuff that I never used to and that's so why I resonate with that um, and, and love both of those answers. I absolutely love both of those. Um, you, you guys both seem to you guys both seem to be. Yeah, you seem to be transparent and all this other thing. But you seem to seem to have a big heart. You seem to care. You don't seem like you're doing the whole YouTube thing for the fame. You know, you're, you know what I mean? You're, you're not wanting to be a celebrity. You're simply wanting to, like, share the journey and hope that it helps somebody else. You know, and I can relate to that a ton. Um, Where does that come from? Where's that come from? Because not everybody's built that way. For me, it was that that captive shop. Um, it was us asking questions and challenging and and trying to learn more and want more and be more and 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 us just basically getting the thumb put on us saying, "Hey, you're, you you wouldn't understand even if you tried. Uh, don't don't worry about that. You know, we'll take care of that. You focus on what you're good at. What you're just a seller or a producer. You just keep doing that. Don't mind any of the business stuff. Um, and so that really. That bothered me. And I used to tell Kenny all the time, he would sit there and put things on us that I, and not, no bad stuff about that sure. or anything like that. But they used to just, we used to do things that I'm like, this is not my strength. This is not what I'm good at. This is not what I have any passion towards. I don't want to do it. So if I'm not going to put my best foot forward, why even do it? Uh, so that really just, that's what really stemmed for me is that, 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 oh, I just hated doing that stuff. And I just really wanted to do other things and be better and, 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 and and build bigger and so that really and i know there's a lot of people out there experiencing the same things that i am i'm getting frustrated at their mentor or their uh upline or whoever it may be so that's where it's coming from for me is just sitting there saying guys you can break those chains you can uh go through that ceiling uh there are opportunities out there and, and we do need you uh whether it be with us or somebody else there, there is plenty of room for you guys to grow and that's where it's coming for me is I just want everybody to know, hey, you don't have to sit there and necessarily listen to everything that these guys are saying. I, I can hear that uh, you're probably not someone that um, someone else needs to, needs to challenge in some way. Uh, you, you seem you seem to be like when someone challenges me or tells me I can't do something or tells me you know not to do something, um, you seem like the dude that's going to prove that person wrong. Yeah, not to at least. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm with you. I love that. <laughs> How about you? Kenny? I mean, I would say, you know, that, uh, I think if I could sum up what Ethan was saying, it's essentially that I want every agent out there to have the opportunity to know what's available to them, what opportunities are available. You don't have to be in the dark. There are plenty of people in this industry. You just have to find them that are willing to pull the curtains back and, and, and give you that really helpful information. And so I think, you know, I'm passionate about that, but I'll also just at our, at our first very first um, organization, we actually did a lot of training. And while it didn't actually produce a ton, a ton of fruit for us, you know, that's why we moved on to a different avenue. I think Ethan and I both in a lot of ways loved coaching people. We loved seeing them have success. And so this YouTube channel and potentially a podcast or whatever we do next is an outlet for us. You know, we want to engage with other agents and see them um, have some success and more success than we do. And you get just this satisfaction from that. I'm sure you can speak to that, Cody. So. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, I, I had an opportunity, a manager had to, had me drive four hours to go door knock and help some new agents back about nine years ago. And, and that, uh, I thought the exact same thing all the way home. I'm like, man, um, I had the opportunity to help somebody and, and it felt good. And I got more gratification out of doing that than, than me making sales myself. So I can totally relate. I love that. And that's exactly why I started doing the whole YouTube thing. David Duford, um, 
you know, was an inspiration to start it. And my first videos were freaking God awful. And yeah. hopefully they, hopefully they've gotten better. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've, it's funny. You look back, you guys are probably even doing it now. I look back five years ago, almost five years, four years and 10 months. And I'm like, why did anyone watch that? <laughs> yeah. I'm almost scared to take a look at what we look like six months ago. <laughs> Dude. Imagine what you'll say in six years though. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly right. One thing Kenny's really done to just challenge me, I was not about this whole YouTube thing. I wasn't about being in front of the camera. I've always had some roadblock in my head that said if there's any more than 10 people watching or in front of me, I'm just frozen. Um, he's really pushed me. As you might see on the first few videos, I was stiff as a board talking like this. You know, and now I'm trying to be a little bit more relaxed, more energetic, et cetera. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to see where this thing runs in the next five years. Dude, I can tell you guys have been doing it for a while though, too, though, because you're you're very relaxed, casual, you know. Um, it maybe it wasn't always that way, but I'm loving it. And and more than 10 people are gonna see this in the first 10 seconds after it drops. So uh, you know, it's it's I'm I'm sure this inter I can see this interview getting you know, a couple thousand views in in, in a couple of weeks pretty quick. So awesome. Yeah. And and it's and it's and I'm sure we'll get some good comments and hopefully you guys about to interact in, in some of those. Um well, what's one what's one single activity? that an, an agent can do over the next several months that you believe will drastically impact the amount of income that they earn? So I, I would say that it's just talking to prospects. I mean, that sounds so cheesy, but it's yeah. hard to get around that core principle. And it doesn't even always mean new leads. If you, let's say that you've had some pretty good success let's just say in final expense or selling Medicare supplements. And you've got, I don't care if it's modest, you know, 50 or 75 customers on the books, you, you know, I challenge you in the midst of your week as you're booking new appointments to engage with those current customers. Cause that's really going to open doors. It's going to further establish your relationship. And especially if you do Medicare, people love to refer in Medicare particularly. So just constantly, if you have a down day, maybe your lead flow was delayed or maybe you, know, you had something come up every single day, be talking to prospects. And that can even mean your current customer base. So if you've got a few hours of downtime, pull out that CRM or pull out your Excel spreadsheet and just call Betty and call Joe and just ask them how everything's going. It's AP. It's going to open doors for you. The more people you talk to should be the funnest part of the business too. If you, if you enjoy this business, talking to people is what's going to, continue to help you grow. So, yeah. so, so your, your go-to is Betty for, for, for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yours too? Dude, yeah. my, my team, it, it's so much that my team made t-shirts to say, hello, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Mine <Mind> doesn't <Mr>. do <laughs> That's good. Uh, what, what, what do you think it is for you, Ethan, as far as that big activity, man? Close yourself. Just like Kenny said, I mean, we're, we're both big on that. I, I can still to this day, remember that very first door that I knocked on I mean, I'm sitting there just shaking like this. And I, I, in fact, I think they even booted me out. I'm not sure I even made it there 30 seconds. Um, but the only way to get better and to make sales is to continue knocking on those doors or continue booking those appointments uh, and just getting that activity level up higher. At our last organization, it was, uh, I think it was book 18 appointments a week to see 10. That was the goal. Um, and, and we, we, still, follow we, we that. still follow that. We do not get away from that. We see at a minimum 10 people a week. Um, now what's going to happen is you're going to still be able to see 10 people. Uh, I don't think you're necessarily going to be able to see more and more, but your closing rate is going to go higher and higher. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we do. We still see the exact same number of people every single week. It's just our closing ratio has gotten a lot higher because we've gotten a lot more comfortable because we were exposed to a lot more people. That's good. I always team the uh, sets it sell. And I, I remember my first year, I always sat with 10 every week, man. And it, it's amazing um, what happens when you get to that number consistent, consistently, a lot of good things start to happen. Um, I'm glad you shared that. That makes a ton of sense. Um, all right. Last question. Um, before we get to how they can follow you guys and everything else, what, what's one thing, a moment, and I'm going to delay a little so you can think about this because I'm putting you on the spot. What's one moment that, has you can look back over the 29 years of your existence and be like that one moment really impacted my life. And I can, I can look back on that moment and say, you know what, something shifted in me that day. And I am who I am because of that single moment. Hmm. So, I mean, this is just in life in general that necessarily have to directly relate to 
our insurance career or, or would you say? Yeah. Yeah. It does not have to. No. Yeah. That's a tough question too. So I'm, uh, I, I think I've got mine. Mine's going to be a little cheesy, but I was in college. I had a pretty unique opportunity in college. I had this job that, um, at the time I was just like, God, this thing is terrible. Um, but looking back, I had some pretty, uh, uh, awesome mentors and i always talk about mentors and, and trying to get with the right people my boss was actually my, from that college job was actually my best man in my wedding and he you know he's really gone through uh the entire you know since i was 18 all the way up until now which there's been a lot of room for uh, growth and improvement uh but i was sitting down with him and his boss and i'm you know 19 years old don't care about this job don't care about the two guys i'm in front of I'm here to make my paycheck so I can go home and hit the next party, you know? And uh, I sat down with them and, um, and the, the boss was sitting there going, Ethan, I, you know, you're extremely frustrated uh, for a lot of people here. And I'm like, Oh, okay, well, that's nice. Good way to start. Um, and he goes, but I want it to be a compliment. And he goes, what that, what I mean by that is you're very influential. People listen to you when you talk. And you just got to say the right things and you're always saying stupid stuff. So stop, maybe shift that mindset to know that people, every time you open your mouth, people are listening. And so what you need to do is shift that mindset, shift what you're saying into more uh, important and influential things. And you're going to be taken, you know, out of this world as far as, as being able to help people out. So I really took that and, and will try to take that and run with it. And I really didn't, I mean, I've been trying to implement it and all aspects of my life, but really with this whole YouTube thing and, and, and insurance thing, it's really taken off. People are listening to us and people want to know, uh, you know, why we're saying the things we're saying and how to do what we're saying and things like that. So really that, that little sentence and he, the guy that told me that probably doesn't even remember it. You know, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, Bill Leslie. And he wow. was us last I heard. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's just that little thing that told that they told me, you know, 11 years ago, Ethan, say the right thing, shut up, you're influential, and, and, and people will listen and want to and wanna do what you say. How, how many times have you, ha, have you ever told that story on video? Never told anybody that video. Or Dude, that, I got goosebumps listening to that. Like, yeah. th those are the moments that um, someone is, is like molding and shifting and making you think different than, cause you probably didn't realize you were so influential with the way you spoke. Well, you're a natural salesperson. You said it. Well, that makes perfect sense now, but dude, I totally get that. Um, and the, you, you listen to super successful people. They had these people in their life previously, teachers, whatever that like instilled that confidence in them and shared something with them. And, 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 uh, man, um, you know, I mean, Steve Harvey always tells a story. I love it. How he talks about how it, this was a negative impact that challenged him, but he had a teacher that made fun of him when he said he wanted to be a, um, uh, uh, TV host or comedian or whatever he said. And now, um, he shifts, he, he sends, he mails her a TV every year at Christmas. So that, so that, so that she may, he makes sure he, he, she sees him on TV, uh, Wow. And I'm like, I love that, man. That's good. You, you got to be, that's an origin story, by the way, that I'm not saying you got to share it on every video, mm -hmm. but when you get a chance to like speak or that, I'm telling you what you just said has to be in your story in some way, because it was really good. Powerful. I love that. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. It's good. I never heard that story. So that was good. Wow. Random. Random. Yeah. Yep. You're, you're pulling the, pulling the goods out from us. Good. Good, man. I guess it's early in the morning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. How about you, Kenny? Did you did you come up with one yet? Yeah, you know, I mean, mine's even cheesier, but it's the truth. I've got two young kids. I've got a, a, a little boy that's two and a half years old, and my daughter's a little over one. So my wife and I had them back to back. We weren't with our first son. We did. We weren't expecting. We weren't trying. It happened. You know, God gave us that gift, I suppose. And, uh, you know, I would just say in the first few months of my son's life, I really learned that by no, I was forced to learn that if you live for other people and you put other people at the center of your life, instead of putting yourself at the center of your life, like I had done for 27 years prior to the day, you know, when my son was born, life gets a whole lot better, right? Like once you're more worried about people around you that you love and care about or encounter, um, and, and you stop 
just being so self-centered, life becomes more beautiful. Whether you have money, don't have money, rough times, good times, you can weather all of that stuff once you put other people at the forefront of your life. So it's cheesy, but that's that's really been the pivotal moment in my life. So that's good, dude. That's what you guys are doing and living every single day. You know, um, it's strong. I mean, people, it can be easy, especially me. Like, you know, and it sounds like Ethan and I are a ton alike. Um, I've struggled with some of that in the past and I, I get it, you know, like I get it. Um, but but being able to realize that and put other people first when like like when, before we shoot a video, we ask ourselves, and I'm sure you guys do too, how can we help the person on the other end of the screen? And when you take that type of mentality and you think like that, um, it's a diff. It's 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 a it's not self-serving. It's it's more about the, you know helping others. Um, but you guys seem to seem to do that really really well, um, dude. Awesome freaking interview. You guys are you guys are phenomenal. Thank you for sharing all this stuff. Thank you for sharing some new stuff that you never shared. Uh, <laughs> which I try to do. I try to do, I try to get something out that it's never been shared before. Um, I got a whole page full of notes already. Uh, I'm writing like crazy. Um, how do people continue to plug in and follow you guys? Simple. We just got our YouTube channel is just called Medicare millennials. And, uh, maybe we'll have a podcast out soon, but for now you can follow literally Cody, you, you nailed it. We're just chronicling our journey to building a large successful Medicare book of business. If you're interested in learning more about that, come join our journey and we'll be glad to be open and honest on what we're doing and share that with you. So that's, that's the best way to, to reach us or follow us. We're not big social media guys. So, you know, I get, we're lurkers on most, but yeah, you too, we here. engage. So. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You guys are amazing. Uh, again, Kenny Layman's, Ethan Glidewell, Medicare Millennials. They just dropped the mic. Oh, there. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. If you had to look back over the last 13 years and you had to think of one aha moment that really maybe shifted things for you, right? Got your attention, made you change something, and, and, and it really...